Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. You have probably never heard of Emo Phillips, but he's a stand-up comedian I enjoy a bit. He's an unusual character, and his comedy makes use of that, and as you watch his show, you begin to wonder, who is this weirdo? Phillips does a special kind of comedy which makes use of paraprosdokian humor. A paraprosdokian is a figure of speech in which the latter part of a sentence, phrase, or, or uh, comment is surprising or unexpected in a way that causes the reader or listener to re reframe or reinterpret the first part. So when he speaks, there's almost always a surprise at the end that catches you off guard. For example, I like this short one. Phillips says, do you know who I hate? And the audience answers, who? And Philip says, people that imitate owls. Wow, I could actually hear the eye rolls out there. Now that was a long way to go to make the segue into the fact that there were a lot of people wondering who Jesus was during his ministry. He was the source of much speculation. He, was he the long-awaited Messiah? Was he the forerunner of the Messiah? Was he a prophet? Was he a lunatic? Everyone was asking. And so it was that Jesus and his disciples had moved up into the North Hill Country and come near to a town called Caesarea Philippi. It was named after a Caesar who the Roman world considered a god and in fact, the city had gone through a succession of names for one God or another. And there in that setting, Jesus asked his disciples who other people thought he was. They gave all the answers I mentioned already, which is probably what Jesus pretty much expected. But then Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? I'm sure the question hung there in a pregnant silence. Frederick Buechner comments, nobody wanted to stick his neck out and the silence was deafening till Peter broke it or till it washed up against the rock that Peter was and broke itself. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. It took a lot of guts to say and it was a risky thing too. As Buechner continues, if it was true, it was enough to blow the lid off of everything. If it wasn't true, you could get yourself stoned to death as a blasphemer for just thinking it. But Peter blurted it out. And I think sometimes we are like that, surprising ourselves with the depth of our faith, suddenly caught up in full-fledged conviction, wholly believing and wholly belonging to God. And it's interesting that right after that, Jesus gave the only beatitude he ever gave to a single person, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John. And then he went on to declare that this was the rock on which he would build his church. Some people think that Jesus meant Peter himself, and others think Jesus meant Peter's confession about him. Maybe he meant both. If only the story had ended there. This week we are looking at Peter because when we see what Peter does in the gospel stories, it's a pretty good bet that he's acting the way we would have acted then and the way we, we continue to act now. And I suspect you've had a great and grand moment of faith like Peter's on that day. You know what it's like to have those moments. But then Jesus began to spell out what being the Christ, the Son of the living God, would mean. He began to talk about his suffering and death, and Peter didn't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that either. So Peter took Jesus aside, and the scripture actually says he rebuked Jesus. Can you imagine rebuking Jesus? Peter is as much as saying to the God whom he has just confessed, now you listen to me. Well, Jesus responds by saying, get behind me, Satan. I think first because it was tempting to find a different way than to suffer and die. 
But then Jesus says something else pretty profound. Get behind me, for you have your mind set on human things, not divine things. I think that sounds like us, a lot like us too. Far too often our minds are focused on things far from God, things of our own making, our own desires, our own shallow certainty of how things should be. We know best, we think. But the call is for us to look beyond all that, to see God in God's way, and to align ourselves with that deeper truth. Here's another deep truth. It was a question of identity in this story. But the identity we learn most about was Peter's. The identity we learn the most about is our own. One minute profoundly faithful, the next standing in God's way. Today, every day, let's not imitate owls. Let's imitate Christ. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.